So sometimes I worry that I'll run out of video ideas. And then I have a conversation with someone in real life and they find what I've said really insightful. And then I realize that if they found it insightful, chances are a couple of you might. So that's how some video ideas are born and that's how this one was born. Basically, I just wanna talk you through how to maximize your savings rates for cash savings. Sort of taking you through what I do with a couple of extra optional steps should you have certain circumstances. So, let's get straight into it. No going back, there's no going back to your own life. Not living in the past, we're all So this wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't say pay off debt first. This is so, so, so important, honestly. Unless you are lucky enough to find some sort of savings account which pays you more interest than your debt, then by all means go ahead. But in the current climate, you will find it almost impossible. And if you look at the average rate of savings and the average rate of debt, it just makes no sense to have savings if you have debt. And I was recently talking to someone and actually the whole question of should you have emergency savings if you have debt came up and actually I think the answer is no because at the end of the day you can always fall back on that debt if the emergency does happen so you know if you've got credit cards and stuff paying them off first and saving the money makes so much more sense than aiming to save money for an emergency that may or may not happen and still accumulating the hundreds of pounds of interest. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's go through the hierarchy that you should be sort of funneling your savings down into. The first place that you should be putting your money, if you will benefit from it, is a LISA or a help to buy ISA. So obviously these are only relevant in very specific circumstances and if you wanna know more, I have a video about ISAs, but if it is something that you are going to benefit from for example if you are going to be buying your first home then it makes sense to get this because of the government top up that you get for these accounts so they do have limits and once you've maxed them out you should then move on to the next thing which would be a regular savings account so this is what i do i have a regular savings account with hsbc which at the moment is one of the highest interest rates accounts that there are it's 2.75% and the deal with regular savers is that it's capped at a certain amount. So for example, the HSBC one is capped at £3,000, I believe. And that means that I can't put more than that into it in a year. And it is a regular saver for 12 months. So I'm putting in the max every month, which is £250 a month. And therefore maxing out the sort of better inter interest rates that I can get through doing that. So I do put in the maximum £250 a month into that so that at least a chunk of my money is earning the highest interest it can. Now you can have multiple regular savings accounts. So you could have one with HSBC, one with NatWest. You know, if you wanna keep track and you are able to commit that money, then by all means open up multiple regular savers. However, if you are only willing to commit to one set amount and then everything else you want to sort of trickle down that's fine too now once you've maxed out your regular savings allowance i would say the remainder of the cash needs to go in one of two places and i'm going to use these interchangeably because it will basically depend on the interest rates that you can get from either of these accounts so depending on the rates that you get basically numbers four and five are semi-equal but it is just a high interest savings account or a cash ISA. Obviously the ISA also depends on whether or not you are using a stocks and shares ISA or anything like that and your other ISAs. So just make sure that you're aware of all the rules that surround ISAs and your sort of total allowance for the year. But if you still have allowance left over and the ISA offers you a good interest rate, I would go for that first and then a really good interest savings account. So for me, that used to be Marcus, but they have been dropping and dropping the rate in the last six months or so. So I think they've emailed me like three times and changed my interest rates down. So it's gone from like 1.6 to like 0 0.7 or something. So it's a bit rubbish, but that's kind of where I started. It was the 
highest interest I could find that wasn't really locked away. So that leads me nicely onto my next point, which is if you still have money left over, then the next place it should go would be a fixed account. So this is where a bank will offer you a pretty good rate, but you have to lock that money away for a set period of time. So it could be 12 months, it could be 18 months, you know, but you must be okay with not being able to access that money for that amount of time. And then you'll get the good rate on it. So I used to do this with Monzo Bank, but now their fixed sort of accounts are just not really worth it. The interest rates are so low but it is something to consider if you have money left over. And again, usually they will have minimums and maximums to consider. And then finally, in my opinion, the last place that your money should go is just a bog standard savings account. You know, your sort of normal easy access savings, which usually have something like 0.1% interest. Send me short and sweet, but hopefully useful for at least some of you just to have a think about maybe how you could allocate your money and keep on top of it. That's the one thing I would say as well is I stay on top of my rates and you know, once my regular saver runs out, I look around to see who has the next best rate. Where can I move my money to, to get the best rate? Max that out, then look for the other opportunities. So I think a lot of people would just think of savings as like, oh, I'll just put it in my own bank savings account. Don't think about it, leave it there. But actually if you shop around and you, I don't know, make a spreadsheet to keep track or something, and you are able to utilize all the different offers, you know, from the different banks, you will really maximize your savings rates. That's it for this video. Hopefully that was useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.